Hello everybody, how you doing? I love you, God bless you, Jesus loves you. You're awesome and amazing. Uh, if you are not born again, get born again. If you're living for the world, repent and give your life to Jesus. Because without Jesus, there's no life. Um, I feel in my heart that in today's time, uh, it's very hard and it's also sometimes scary to tell people repent, change direction, choose God, stop worshiping false idols. But we have to we have to tell people that. Um, I was in a school yesterday and I seen a bunch of sick pe sick people and the crowd and. I could hear the Lord say, pray for all the sick people here, and honestly, I didn't. I just prayed at a distance. I prayed at a distance. And uh, I felt like I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Um, and sometimes you'll have days like that. But you're also going to have days where you do just feel that boldness, and you go out and pray for people. Um, I actually handed my card out at the school and said, if you like prayer, and I stood next to people and prayed over them. But they were not aware of the prayer. But uh, I wanted to speak on a video that my wife had seen and posted of a lady who said that she had um, spoke, heard the voice of the Lord say to give a homeless man bananas, and she went in there and she wanted to give him more food. And I wanted to point out something in this video. She's talking back and forth with God. She wants to buy chicken. God says, don't give, don't buy no chicken. Do what I tell you. And and I want to tell you that that was a blessing for me because I go through this every day. I, I hear the Lord <laughs> every day. Every day he tells me what to feed the homeless. We, we have a homeless ministry, a, I mean a, a, a feed a ministry that feeds the less fortunate and homeless, and um, and we and I we just got all kinds of bags of clothes that we went through yesterday and sorted them out. Uh, some could be going for summer, some could be for winter. So the summer we'll put in storage and bring them out in summer, and uh, the winter clothes are gonna go out today. Um, uh, we 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 don't have uh direct funding for we don't have that tax write off. Um, deal where, where, where we can give you you can get your tax write off or anything uh, but we do have people that that look for their reward in heaven uh, and that's what it's all about when they sow into this ministry um, the Lord gives us what we need I mean we, we don't we don't have enough to to get a bigger house <laughs> We don't have enough to <coughs> rent a building and work out of the building. But we have enough to, to take soup and food every single day to the park and feed the, the people that show up. Um, you know, not, not every day we feed the same homeless, but we probably 25% are the same. But a lot of people have things to do in the daytime, and they can't always be there. But I hear I hear God every day, and and I was this that video was so such a blessing, and um, and we need to understand that. Help me, Lord Jesus. First, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for this video technology. I bless this technology in Jesus' name. I pray that this video goes out to the world and people understand that you are here. You are alive. You live in us. You, you're amazing and we can have a relationship one-on-one. -on -one. The blood of the cross allows us to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. And I thank you, Jesus, for the blood. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for everything you did because waking up every day and saying good morning Jesus and hearing the Lord speak to me even even correct me it's a blessing and I thank you Lord Father I just love you and I praise you In Jesus name help me speak what you want me to say not what I want In Jesus name amen 
so this video basically is, is to let people know to confirm what that lady was saying and that God will speak to you and I've already I have to share this but I had in the past went to uh, a psychologist um, because I was hearing voices of uh, death and all this stuff uh, I was diagnosed at 41 with uh, a PTSD from uh, um, my childhood and um, uh, they had uh, said that I had the same PTSD as a Vietnam veteran who was in war camp and uh, I've never I don't think I've shared this before but I'm sharing it now um, and I had nightmares and backflashes for a big part of my life. Uh, after 41, I started having daymares. Um, and I guess they're called daymares. I don't know, but I would be watching TV and it would just, I would go back to a traumatic experience in my life. And uh, drugs and, and food and, and uh, a sinful lifestyle was, kept my mind off of everything. Um, so I used to hear demons, you know. I used to hear uh, suicide thoughts and all that. And, uh, so when I was 41, I went to a psychologist. And, and, and uh, just recently, I had, um, uh, they called me up uh, for a review to talk to me. And I went in and talked to them. And they asked me if I still hear voices. And I said, absolutely, I do. I go, but it's different now. I told him I gave my life to Jesus, and now I hear Jesus. I, uh, I still hear the voices of the devil, I told him, but I just tell him, shut up. The psychologist looked at me like I was crazy, just all they write down. As soon as you tell them something, they're like this. So what do you hear Jesus say, they said? Oh, well, he tells me to pray for people. He's telling me to pray for you. Can I pray for you? They said, no. Start writing down. <laughs> so I'm considered crazy because I hear Jesus. Um, I can't believe I'm confessing this stuff. But you know what? The Word of God says we are going to hear His voice. And uh, I had told the psychologist, I said, you know what, man? Uh, I, I I hear Jesus every day. He tells me to pray for people. He tells me to love people. He tells me what to cook, uh, what to what to say. what um, and, 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 and sometimes I don't get it right, you know? When you hear when you hear the Lord, He's gonna tell tell you a lot of stuff, and then you're like you're trying to remember, and and sometimes you're hearing when He's speaking to you, when He's talking to somebody else, and then God's talking to you. It, it, it gets a little bit, you know, it, it takes practice. So I, I walked out of the psychologist with that meeting, and they had said that basically I was nuts, I'm crazy still, but as long as I'm not thinking of suicide, everything's all right, and I'm not. Uh, I'm more alive than ever. Jesus wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. And I believe he's already talking to you. It's, it's It doesn't sound like, hey, son. It's more like that voice in your head that sounds like you. But it lines up with the Bible. It, it's telling you to do something good. You know, um... If the kids are fighting and I get upset at the kids, I hear the Lord say, why are you upset? Love on them. You know, um, why did you do that? That's not what you're born to do. I hear that. You know, and, and he's teaching you, you know. He's training you in his ways. He wants you to live a life that's pleasing to him. That's why you were born and created. So how can you not live a life according to Jesus Christ without hearing him teach you and train you and speak to you throughout your day, throughout your life?
He tells me what I'm, what's on the shelf before I even know what's on the shelf. He tells me what spices to put in the soup that I make daily for the less fortunate. Or he tells me, make, make sandwiches today. Don't make soup, you know? Uh, he told me the other day that it's time to get all these cereals and, and, gran and granola and all that stuff and mix it so the kids can, that was for today, so they can get make little snack bags for the less fortunate. He tells me to get and make a video about hearing his voice. He tells me to confess things, to, 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 to let you know. Don't lose focus on this very important thing. Jesus is coming. He's coming back for his people, his brides. If you're living in this world and you think he's not coming, you need to get right with God. You have to live this in this world knowing he's coming and that you are preparing yourself daily. He could come right now. Are you ready? You should be. You should be. I just heard I'm coming. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um... He said no excuses. There will be no excuses when he comes. When he comes, it's too late for excuses. You're just going to be in judgment. Lord God, thank you. So I'm just going to continue this video. <coughs> right here it talks about, in John 10, uh... John 10, he talks about the good shepherd and the sheep, okay? But I'm going to take it to 22. Jesus claims to be the Son of God. It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah... Tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. Okay? So, people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, things he did, people who don't believe that Jesus was the Son of God, People that don't believe that the Holy Spirit is here to teach us and train us and show us the ways of God to, to make us holy because He is holy, to help us become holy for He is holy. They are not Jesus' sheep. If you're not living a life to obedience, you're not Jesus' sheep. If you think going to the church and paying 10% is all you have to do, you're not Jesus' sheep. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. So that means right there also, too, that there is people who think they are doing God's will, and they're not Jesus' sheep. And then it says right here, my sheep listen to my voice. Okay. My sheep listen to my voice. They don't ignore it. Yesterday, when I was at that school, a lot of people, I listened to Jesus' voice. And I, and I, and I didn't go out and ask all these people if I could pray for them. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I'll do better. Help me to do better. Jesus' name. My sheep listen to my voice and I know them. Okay, so, and they follow me. Okay, that's what I wanted to read to you right now. 
That lady in that video heard the voice of the Lord, went in with obedience, followed Jesus, went in there and did. She had a conversation with Jesus. I want to buy chicken, this and that. Come to find out, she walked out the store. And God was talking to another person in the store and told her to buy chicken for that homeless person. That's our God. That's our God. He wants to talk to you. He will. But how is he going to talk to you if you don't want to listen? How is he going to talk to you if you don't want to obey? Thank you, Lord. When I was a little kid, Lord's given me this, this, this vision. When I was a little kid, I used to fight my dad a lot. I used to come against him a lot. When my dad didn't, my dad would say, you know what? You don't want to listen to me? Fine. Don't talk to me for a week. <sighs> no matter who my dad was. He, was, he was an alcoholic when I was a kid. But no matter who he was, when he cut me off for a week and would not speak to me, oh, that wrecked me. And it was because I wouldn't listen to him. I wouldn't obey him. I was always coming against him. When he was sober, he was a good guy. It's when he was drunk, he was no longer my dad. He was under control of the alcohol. Everybody loved my dad. Everybody loved him. I had issues with him. Not no more. I love my dad. I forgive my dad. My dad's a man of God. What I'm getting at you, what the Lord's trying to, he gave me this memory to show you that my earthly dad, who's also named Reggie, would cut me off because I wouldn't listen to him. And then after a week, he would say, you ready to listen? I would say, yeah. And then we would hug. And I would be so happy because my dad's talking to me again. Are you getting this? Jesus will talk to you if you listen. If you follow him daily. When you pick up that cross, as a daily thing. That's not just one day. When you say the sinner's prayer, the so-called sinner's prayer, when you give your life to Jesus, that's not a prayer for just you to get to heaven. That's a prayer for heaven to get into you. And so you, with the power of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, can go out and finish the work. Fight the good fight when the race is already won. Go to the finish line. He just told me, stay on the subject. My sheep will hear my voice. It says, my sheep, listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So when you listen to the Lord, he knows you. He knows you. He knows you. Because you follow him. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. The father and I are one. Listen, a lot of people like to bring up uh, salvation. You can't lose your salvation. If you've never had your salvation, then you can lose it because you've never had it. Maybe that don't make sense. But if you've never had your salvation, come on. You, you, yeah, Lord. You could... You must know that a life in Christ is an obedient life to the Word of God. It's spending time with God. It's reading His Word. It's studying His Word. It's doing everything you can to glorify Him. Are you living a life to glorify God? Think about that. Ask yourself that. I saw a guy with a tattoo on his leg that says, Only God can judge me. 
But you know what? We can look at our own life and say, is it lining up with the word of God? Are we giving glory to God daily? We should daily give glory to God. Every day do something to glorify our God because he's our God. He's our father. He's our husband. He created us. When was the last time you glorified God? Check this out. Isaiah 58. He said, don't lose track. He wants to show... This video is to show you that God really speaks to his folks, his people, his sheep, his children. And they obey. Isaiah 58. I love Isaiah 58. It talks about true fasting, true worship. Um, is also another good one. Um, well, right here it says, The Lord will continue to give the water, remove the yoke. It says, then your salvation will come on Isaiah 58, 8, I'll start. Then your salvation will come like the dawn, and your wounds will click quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. I mean, God will always have your back. You need to read Isaiah 58, true fasting. And then it says, then, after you do all this, you figure there's a bunch of stuff he's telling you to do. And then it says, he, he's going to be with you. Then your godliness will go forward after you learn how to do these things in your life. You know, set the oppressed free, feed the homeless, um, um, love people. And there's a lot in here. And the glory of the Lord will protect you from the beginning. God will get you have your back. Then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes. I am here. Did you hear that? <coughs> when you live a godly life, when you hear the voice of the Lord, when you obey and you call on him and he will say, here I am. He'll speak to you. He will say, here I am. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. So you getting it? We can hear God. Many people say, I don't hear him. Maybe you're ignoring him. Maybe he's already speaking to you. Even little things. Little things. It's God. If God can tell me what to cook and how to cook, what to spice, this and that. Um, I've had the Lord, or I can't find something in my house. And the Lord reminds me where it's at. He showed me a picture. It's right there. Little things. Not just big things. Not just prophetic prophetic visions god is there for everything but you have to include him and you have to want it lord i can't find this how can i find this lord um i'm fixing my car and i just can't figure this out how can i do this lord holy spirit is to teach you everything Trying to find another one that just came to me. I will say. Yeah, I don't even know where the scripture's at. Oh man, this I rebuke this technology. Do not Luke thirteen twenty seven. You have to understand, God speaks to you. And there's one thing that you don't want him to say to you. When the master of the house is locked, let me see, hold on, then I will say, but dang, the top of the streets.
And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Get away from me and all who do evil. Let's start with 25. The narrow door. This is a teaching on the narrow door. Uh, 22. It says, Jesus went through the, the towns and villages teaching, and he went always pressing on toward Jerusalem. Um, uh, someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He replied, work hard to enter the narrow door to the kingdom, to God's kingdom. For many will try to enter, but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, but I, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you. Where do you come from? Get away from me, all you who do evil. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You will... See Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you will be thrown out. And people will come from all over the world, from the east to the west, the north and south, and take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, some who have, who seem least important now will be greatest then. And some who are the greatest now will be least important then. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let that happen to your children. God, thank you for your voice. Holy Spirit, speak to me in my sleep. Holy Spirit, speak to me every step I take. Holy Spirit, I can't live without you. Jesus died in that cross for me to have a relationship with God, and I can only do that because of you, Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me talk to God. Help me to hear God's voice. Thank you, Lord. About two weeks ago, a person that, that I've been texting, uh, text ministry, a new person in a ministry, has said this words to me. Pray for me, brother. I heard the Lord say, tell her to talk to me. So I tell her, God says, talk to him. Ask him those questions. She said, I'm too afraid to talk to God. Please just pray for me. God. He said, bride. He said, how can I not want to talk to my bride? Why would I marry someone and not talk to them? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. God loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. God came down in human form. Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit was God. God in, in human form. God did the first move. He loved you enough to send Jesus. God watched Jesus suffer. A suffer that no man in the world could take. Jesus did that. Jesus did a step two. Step three is you. You recognizing this wonderful thing Jesus did. And you do not let that just be for nothing. You give your life to God. You give your life to God. You repent of your ways and you repent daily. Daily you say, Lord, I made mistakes yesterday. I need help. I need you. I love you, Lord. Help me today. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Even the ones I don't know of. Forgive me. Forgive me. I belong to you. And you live your life according to your inheritance. You're reformed. And created before the foundation of the world to please God, to give glory to God. One thing you could do to check yourself is, have I given glory to God today? That's what you're supposed to do. And then you get in a habit and, you, and God and Jesus and Holy Spirit trains you to glorify God every day. Every day. You say a simple prayer. Um, I can't find my keys and you pray and God helps you find your keys little simple thing I'm just giving you an example you know what and your wife comes in hey babe it's crazy but I was praying I lost my keys and, and God gave me a vision I found them and glory to God you know 
you're with your kids and you're you're praying over your dinner and just glory thank you god we give you all the glory for this beautiful meal in front of us and lord god i ask you in jesus name that you take half of the sustenance from this meal and put it inside of a homeless person a hungry person in the name of jesus you can do that by faith by faith we are saved by faith we are healed I love you. I hope this helped you. Jesus loves you. And he's ready to speak to you every single day and be in your life. <coughs> we need to know the husband. And the husband wants and already knows the bride. <coughs> so don't let that. scripture that says get away from me i do not know you i close the door on you don't let that be in your life don't let that be about you give your life to jesus daily i love you and god bless you i'm gonna end with a prayer heavenly father i thank you lord for who you are i thank you for your voice i thank you that that that, that i'm your sheep lord i thank you lord god i i look forward to the wedding day i look forward to the coming of jesus christ <coughs> and the mighty angels I'm excited. Uh, prepare me. I want to stand before you. Oh man, I gotta turn to Jude. Lord, Lord, I love you. I gotta turn to Jude. I just heard Jude. Tell him Jude. Lord God, I love you so much. There's something in Jude. Jude's amazing, but there's something in Jude that you need to understand. It's only God that can prepare us. It's only God that can prepare us for the coming of Jesus Christ. And it says in Jude 24, now all the glory to God, right? Remember, make sure to check yourself. See if you're glorifying God every day. Who, now all the glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault all glory to him who alone is god our savior through jesus christ our lord all glory majesty and power and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time lord god i thank you that you are able to keep me and make me and present me faultless before you on judgment day lord i pray that i am ready and I pray that I continue to do the, the good deeds that you tell me to do. I know I wasn't saved by, by, by good deeds, Lord. But since I am saved through faith, I will do good deeds to glorify you. In Jesus' name, I love you and I praise you. I speak life over those watching right now. Raise your hand up right now. If you are sick, if you're, if you're battling something right now, raise your hand. In Jesus' name, I bless you. And I speak life over you, life in the name of Jesus. And right now I command all sickness, infirmities, worry, doubt, fear right now. The, I bind the strong man over your life right now. I put him in a one-inch box and I command it to go now. Go from you in Jesus' name. Right now I speak healing over your body, head to toe. Jesus' name. I thank you for brand new organs, Lord God. I thank you for brand new mindset in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I love you. I thank you, Lord God. Amen. Hope this helps you. Have a good day. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.